attorneys at The Advocates can't actually prevent you from being in a cycling accident. They will be by your side to support you following your accident. Our legal services won't cost you a dime out of pocket. So when you need an injury attorney, call us. We're The Advocates, your Utah personal injury attorneys. You didn't deserve to be in an accident, but you do deserve an advocate. This is The Monty Show, the truth in sports talk streaming. When you want unbiased opinions about your favorite team without the spin, all you have to do is find The Monty Show, streaming live and available 24 hours a day, seven days a week on YouTube. And now, here's Monty. Hey, hey, The Monty Show live on your YouTube machine. Uh, Monday, April 8th, college basketball ended yesterday with Iowa's loss to South Carolina. Yes, we are going to talk about that. Is there a game tonight? Allegedly, there's a game tonight. Uh, I I I don't know because college basketball is dead. Yes, I'm 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 in that. It's that kind of you, you know, it's, yeah. it's Monday, and Jake decided that he doesn't want to work, so he's taking Friday off to go get laid in the yeah. desert. Hey, man. You know, I, I I'm not un, in favor, un, in favor of it. It uh, the okay. the money program okay. presented by the advocates, theadvocates.com, the best injury attorneys in the business, where you never pay the advocates unless and until they win your case. So you can chat with an injury attorney live online at twenty four seven three sixty five at theadvocates.com, and it won't cost you a dime. And as we've talked about for weeks now, they I uh, work in our communities. They are not just billboards on the freeway, TV commercials, or the advocates actually care about the communities they work in because they live in the communities they serve. Check them out online no matter where you are, theadvocates.com. So we had, I think, the end of the college basketball season yesterday uh, as Caitlin Clark and the Iowa Hawkeyes lose to South Carolina mm -hmm. and are, you know, not even arguably, one of the most unlikable figures uh, wearing a $5,000 Louis suit coaching a basketball game, won a national championship. And yeah, I think that the college basketball season ended. And I think the real question is, did Caitlin Clark save college basketball? And I don't even have a question about that. I have no doubts in my mind. Caitlin Clark saved college basketball and what has been a historically bad college basketball season. The only reason people tune in to college basketball, women's or men, was to see Caitlin Clark. She set a viewership record. And when I say she, Caitlin Clark is the reason you watched Iowa versus UConn. There's no question about that. Caitlin Clark is the reason that you turned on the TV most of this college basketball season and certainly since the turn of the year. Caitlin Clark saved college basketball. She brought you to the screen. In an era where we have nameless, faceless stars of college basketball, in what is going to be one of the weakest NBA drafts in a decade, Caitlin Clark saved college basketball. Does she earn renowned success and respect? She does not, which I think speaks to her greatness. Not everybody likes Caitlin Clark. Not everybody should like Caitlin Clark. If you are elite and you are the best at what you do, a lot of people are not going to like you. And that's just fine because Clay Caitlin Clark is going to go on to the WNBA and she's going to go on to make millions in commercial success. But let's remember one thing in the 23 24 college basketball season, Jake, in my opinion, Caitlin Clark saved this season. Absolutely, and, and I think you're exactly right. I mean, people tuned in to 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 catch her, and I, and she became a phenomenon. You know, I I don't think that people really started catching on to the Caitlin Clark greatness. Um, you know, until halfway to three quarters into the season, and then it basically set fire to the sport. And I think that that's what the sport needed. And I think you know, college basketball is in a position where we don't we obviously don't have 
a million and one players like Caitlin Clark. We don't have a ton of great storylines to follow. I mean, it, it, it's seemingly every day in our members only group chat where someone's like, yeah, wow, this team's disappointing or that team's disappointing or, you know, the, the big 12's terrible or the SEC's the best. Like we talk about conferences and teams. We don't talk about players. And I think that Caitlin Clark changed that a little bit. And I think, you know, the, the rivalry between Caitlin Clark and, and, and Angel Reese, you know, was, was ultimately good for the sport. I think the sport needs more heat like that. And, I, and frankly, if you said to someone, hey, you know, do you do you think we'd ever come into a time where women's college basketball would be outpacing uh, a lot of professional leagues viewership-wise on a game-in, game-out basis, uh, people would have said you're out of your mind. But that's the power that Caitlin Clark was able to, to wield and control. And I think for her, you know, obviously one of the best college careers we've ever seen. And I think that's the type of performance women's college basketball is going to need uh, moving forward to to continue to stay relevant. And, and this growth, of course, you know, you 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 won't always get like 14 and a half million people watching one game. You won't always have these super high numbers. But I think we can all agree that women's college basketball definitely definitely was raised through Caitlin Clark's career. And I think that that, that is is why I agree that Caitlin Clark saved college basketball this season. Cause there really isn't a lot to hold on to with college basketball right now. Like, like you, no. you, you don't really have, you know, a, a, a lot of teams where you're like, man, I can really marry up to them. Like you're either a UConn lover or you hate UConn, right? You're, you're either you, you're it's one way or the other. There's no like kind of happy medium in college basketball anymore. And that's partially why I think the sport struggles sometimes. Yeah, I have no doubt that this is going to be one of the worst college drafts I think that we have ever seen. I think this coming draft, you are going to see more international and G League talent taken at the top of this draft than we probably have ever seen. Uh, I think it, it is, it's not even arguable at this point. Like you look at the situation with John Calipari. Um, John Calipari is no longer a coach of consequence in college basketball. If you didn't hear uh, you may see on the ticker that John Calipari is is likely doing a deal as we speak with Arkansas uh, for a significant pay cut and an incentive-laden contract, and Kentucky is happy to let him go. And I think it's one of these situations where it's coming back now because of NIL, but college basketball, as we have talked about, has been significantly damaged by NIL. And you find most of your 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 talent left the college basketball ranks because NIL did not exist. Now that NIL is in place, it is coming back. But the 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 absence of the ability to capitalize on your name, image, and likeness absolutely damaged college sports. There, And I think basketball took the brunt of that damage uh, because you had other options, whether it be the G League, whether it be Australia, Lithuania, if your last name was Ball, like yeah. you had other avenues to go and make your money. And I, I think we saw most kids doing that or not most, a lot of kids and certainly some of the top talent in uh, the country doing that. And I like I look at Caitlin Clark. If Caitlin Clark is not Caitlin Clark, I think you do not see that, um, for instance, Iowa and UConn. In the the final four, the most watched college professional any basketball game ever on ESPN was UConn and Iowa. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's the whole sentence. A woman's basketball game with Caitlin Clark in it is the most watched basketball game ever on ESPN. Caitlin Clark saved the game of basketball. Well, and, period. And, and, and and I think that that again, it's that whole idea of people. People love a, a, a hero role. People love to, to to latch on to a sports figure and follow their path. And I think that you know, I agree. Just, just the concept of hey, like you know, it's Caitlin Clark and and Paige Beckers. Like these two are going to go back and forth, and you know, this is going to be a phenomenal game. This is this has the opportunity to be uh, uh, a national championship game in the semifinal format type situation. And I think. People love that. And and that's what I'm saying, man. Like, I think that, that, you know, there, there has to be, you know, another one and another one and another one for women's college basketball to continue to raise up. We need more talents like Caitlin Clark coming out of 
you know, the woodwork, if you will. We need more, more, more young women being developed at the high school level so they can go and play at that level. And I do think some of that is happening. I, I think, you know, part of the reason that NIL is so prolific in college basketball is because these guys are good. These guys can play. <laughs> like yeah. These guys are skilled. And it's, so it's kind of this thing where it's like, hey, it's one, you play basketball one way at a young level, and then you played a totally different way at the college level. And so you're dealing with different dynamics in both men's and women's college basketball, and it yeah. makes it tough sometimes. And can we talk about this screen? I'm so tired of hearing about the screen. Let's get something straight. The screen in the UConn game, without a doubt, this is an illegal screen. Every single time, no matter when in the game or what kind of game it is. This screen is so flagrant. It is so flagrant. They left, we're left with no choice but to call it. Illegal screens happen every single night in the NBA. They don't call it. Illegal screens happen in every basketball game and they go uncalled. Unless you are so flagrantly out of position and you are so flagrantly outside of the rule that you leave the officials no choice but to call an illegal screen. And I would point a couple of things out in these photos. Number one, the UConn player setting the screen, look how off kilter she is. And when I say off kilter, the rule on a screen is physically you need to be inside the frame of your body. Okay, so you can't be, I don't know, completely leaning to your left with your shoulder and your elbow with your right leg dragging because you're leaning. Look at her right leg is completely bent because she's leaning to her left. Yeah. Look at where her arms are. Your arms cannot be up. Okay. The other thing about this screen you have to have position set. Does that look like when she gets to contact with her right arm in front of her? Does that look like she's she's beaten the offensive or the defensive player to the position? She certainly did not. And the other thing I would point out here is Mike Mapes in our our Mike Maples in our um in our chat pointed out the other day. And I think we both said the exact same thing at the exact same time. If you're pissed that this was called an illegal screen, go and get Paige Beckers. Go and bitch at Paige Beckers. What is wrong with this picture with Paige Beckers on the right there? Who wants to tell me what's wrong with this picture? It's fundamentally fucked. That's what's wrong with this picture. <laughs> she is so high off of the screen. When you play basketball and, and you play in any organized or you're coached, you are taught to put your hip on your teammate's hip, the person setting the screen for you. You are taught to put your hip on her hip. Look at the gap between Paige Beckers and the person setting the screen. It's a terrible fundamental basketball play by, by Paige Beckers trying to run off this screen. This What was the point of the screen here? Because Paige Beckers isn't using it. No. Like, there's so much wrong with this screen. They left no choice for the official. So please stop with this bullshit that, well, they wanted to see. Caitlin Clark in the in the final. Well, I'm sure they did. Calling this screen an illegal screen is not flagrant. It is not, oh, the fix is in. By any rule that you read, by any rule that you read, this is an illegal screen. 100%. Stop with the bullshit trying to say that this is not an illegal screen. If you're upset with this screen, go talk to Paige Beckers because she doesn't know how to run off a screen. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it is on. Page. I mean, there's no question. You can't put your your teammate in that position. And 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 again, it, the the commitment to try to make the screen, I get it. But at the same time, like you got to have situational awareness as well. You know, you you're in that game situation. You can't afford to turn over there. That's not going to work. And and that's exactly what they got. And I think that you know people freaked out about it. And it's like, dude, like like if they don't call it how does that make Iowa feel i mean that's such an egregious advantage you're giving them by not blowing the whistle look how far outside she is look where the screen starts look where the screen ends 
<laughs> Look where she moves so much. Her body is outside the three point line. Well, and I think the thing that are you kidding me? The pictures can't show you if you haven't seen this screen somehow. The one thing the pictures can't show you is how much she used her arms to set the screen too. She's oh she's God. basically you know lead blocking for Paige Beckers at that point, and that's the issue. It's wild is that, to me. Is that you're you're not only moving, but you're you're so you're sliding, but you're also extending. You can't extend your arms when you set a screen. It has to be it. You have to be in position. Uh, uh, and and arms essentially down to your side. That's how you set a proper screen. You're basically using your chest and your shoulder to set the screen, not your arms, not your not your hip. Like in the league, all the time you'll see guys get whistled for this because they stick their hip out or they they want to lean into the screen one way or the other. You can't do that. And again, you can't do it ever. But if you're going to do this in a game that has national championship implications, I would not do it at the top of the key with the game on the line. Right in front of the official. Because they have to. They ha It's so egregious. They have to. It's like, I, I don't even know like what, uh, what, else you're, what else you could even compare. Like, it was so, it was a football play. Yeah. It was so bad. It's not like. Like every screen Rudy Gobert sets in the NBA is an illegal screen. He's leaning, he's moving. They never call it. If it's the NBA, well, it won't be the NBA finals because Rudy Gobert will never play for a championship. But I anyway, get it. my point is, if that had been any other, if this had been October, November, December, hell, even the conference tournament, that, that play may not get called. In the NCAA tournament, in the Final Four, it's getting called. Yeah. It's on national TV in the most watched basketball game ever on ESPN. And it's the right call. And it's the right call. Like, you, you, it, it, and I love it. Like, uh, yeah, you watch a lot of women's games. That's never called. It doesn't matter if it's never called. It was the right call. If you're upset about it not being called ever, okay. I guess we can talk about that. Don't make the argument it's a legal screen because it's not legal. It is illegal. And 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 the issue is is that it was <laughs> so egregious you forced their hand. Like this point here, I love this. Hey, so it's never called. Okay, you're right. Most of the time it's never called. But the reason it's never called is because it wasn't as egregious as this one was. She clearly moves probably two to three times her body to the side. Yeah. And then uses her arms. It's not in question, man. It's not. This isn't some some like all oh, the fixes in or this was a borderline play. This was not a borderline play, man. It's not borderline. You were you were lined up in the neutral zone. You 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 boarded a guy. You you did any like whatever can like whatever comparison you want to use, man. It is illegal what she did, and and, and that's just the reality of it. Yeah, you know what the the other reality of this is is that. I'm curious. I'm curious how many people even care. Because the one thing that we've seen, and and I totally I've said this on the show a thousand times. I believe that people like Caitlin Clark, um, Angel Reese, Paige Beckers, like the best players in college basketball for on the women's side are critically important to young people in this country, especially young women. Like watching the and I I have no life. The drive, chip, and putt championships at Augusta yesterday were really important. And the kids there, what what, what was the the one of the women's champions when they have different age groups? I think the the uh, fourteen and fifteen year old. It could have been. I don't remember her age, frankly, but she was one of the older groups. What did she say? I was inspired by Caitlin Clark. That's a golf, a girl that is plays golf, and I believe her other sport is soccer, inspired by Caitlin Clark. Yeah. Like, it's critically important. But I also think there is a large swath of people with penises in this country who don't care about women's college basketball. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the, the interesting parts of this is, if you're a basketball fan of any kind, you watch the Caitlin Clark game. Yes. And... It's unfortunate that there's always going to be people like, ah, it's women's college basketball. It's women's sports. I'm not going to watch. And I totally get that. You missed out on one of the greatest performances I think we've ever seen. Yeah. And by the way, throwing up 30 
in the national championship game against the number one defense in the country. And, uh, and having no it be thing. one of your worst performances of the year. Yeah. One of her worst performances of the year. No doubt about it. And it is no small thing. I don't know. I think Caitlin Clark saved college basketball. I think college basketball has been dead for several years. Like I think this will be, and I'll continue to say it. I think this is going to be one of the worst NBA drafts in the last decade. I think that the percentages. Sorry. Sorry. Take my issue here. Sorry. No, all of a sudden we're taking days off and we can just, you Dude, know, it was an accident. Slam the bro. microphone. It was an accident. Okay. I think, I think uh, Alex Sar from the, um, the Australian Basketball League is going to go number one in this draft. And I also think that you look at some of the other guys, Nikola Topic um, from Serbia, I think is a top five pick. Um, I think this uh, Buzelis kid from Lithuania that everybody's been raving about, I think he's a top five pick. Uh, I do think Donovan Klingon from uh, UConn is going to be arguably a top five pick, depending on what happens. Mm -hmm. But I think you're going to see more foreign-born players, and this is going to be a draft that's going to be very difficult to hit a home run in. Well, and that's why I think I, that's why I do think Bronny inevitably does go to the draft. And he should. Yeah, I think he's got opportunity here. I think you you look at his situation and the season he didn't have this past season. This is the exact kind of draft Bronny needs. Hundred percent. If you are a team in the bottom half of the first round and you don't take Bronny James, I think you're crazy. Yeah. If he stays in the draft, yeah. Because remember, he put his name in the transfer portal. He can he can pull out of the draft. Like, yeah. if Bronny's in the draft and you have the ability to select him outside the top 10, outside the lottery, essentially, and you don't, I don't know what you're thinking here. Totally agree. Because the, you are, you are. yes, he's a developmental project. Yes, there's a chance he's, he's going to be a bust. But do you understand the lack of depth in this draft? The absolute lack of depth in this draft, and I, it, certainly on the college stuff. Well, and and I think that everybody wants Bronny to be LeBron. Everybody wants him to wants to compare him to LeBron, and I'm telling you, it's not a fair comparison. I, I think Bronny's a hell of a basketball player. Yeah. And 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 yeah, did he have the season he wanted to have at SC? No, of course not. Um, but that doesn't change the fact his IQ is really high on the basketball floor. Uh, and I I think he can be a great two guard in the league. I think that he could. He could easily be uh, in a starting five in a couple of years. Like he's he's definitely. But I think he's a Rajon Rondo type player. I don't think he'll ever be a great three point shooter. That's just my opinion. I think he he just he's a guy that will be a a very very good facilitator. Mm -hmm. He will be somebody. He's never going to average twenty points in the league. He's never going to shoot forty percent from three. I think he's going to be – he's a guy that can be the the cherry on top of a championship starting five. I agree with that. Yeah. And it's because he is he is already unselfish because I think he knows he has to be unselfish. Yes. Because he's not a guy that's going to get – you know, again, I don't think he ever averages 20 points. I could see him averaging double-digit assists in the NBA. He'll never be a guy that you're like, oh, man, look at him. He scores 75 points. That ain't nah, who that Bronny ain't him, is. That's not who he is. It's not who he is, but you should take him on prize picks. Yes. Now, prize picks, as you know, stay hard. Sometimes and sometimes not. But I appreciate all the people on Instagram and Twitter who reached out to me over the weekend, who took my advice last week and played Caitlin Clark all weekend long on prize picks because you made money, period, point blank. Right. You made money. That now you may not have known that she was playing. <laughs> in a national championship game hold yesterday. On, hold on. Did anybody know they were playing yesterday? Like nine out of ten people did not know. How poor of a job did they do marketing the national championship game of women's college basketball? Like, were we gonna run an ESPN ad or like were we yeah. gonna do something? Yeah, it was a little disappointing. It was a little disappointing. But for those of you that got on prize picks yeah. and you played. Caitlin Clark, she cashed all weekend long. All weekend long. I won both nights on Caitlin Clark. Boom. Love it. Um, back up into the positive um, already because we did not have a good – with mm. some <laughs> tough sledding there Thursday. Yeah. Show me the money. The gambler did not help me on Thursday or Friday. Oh, he's got a new bookie. He's putting out different numbers now. I think Shohei Otani is in a lot <coughs> of trouble. 
a lot of shop. anyway prize picks prizepicks.com use yeah. the promo code monty um major league baseball on prize picks has been phenomenal if you are not on eddie tonight you're an idiot because the guy's going to make you money i don't i haven't even looked at his number yet um let's see cuz uh, you know i'm dealing with my dog who's older than fuck so his back is killing him <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> um, I'm so bitter about my dog. Zach Eddy, 38 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. Yeah, I would take that. He has been undefeated. I think he's on a six-week run of being undefeated in in um in in games. His number at 38 and a half, he's hit it four out of the last five. Uh-huh. Uh, and hit 36 against NC State. I think I've hit it every time. That's my guy. I'm By in. I'm way, in. Do I not get a money rant about about Zach, Eddie, Edie, your tall guy beating the hell out of DJ Burns? Do we not get? Do we not get that? He's only good because he's tall. I don't understand what the issue is. Well, you weren't a DJ Burns guy. I hate DJ Burns. Yeah, he's fat. I he's was out of expecting shape. a money Monday rant about Burns. No. Listen, he's a good story. I get it. Everybody likes Chubbs McGahee. Like, that's why so many people were rooting for Zion. I understand it. You like portly mother... They're good at sports. We get it. I hit dinners. Fat. Right? Fat. Chicken tendies and fries. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. He's not a good basketball player. And I ain't giving up no damn Rice Krispie treats. Right? He's not. <laughs> what do you want me to say about it? Yeah. Like, listen, I understand. Oh, the ACC is the greatest basketball conference ever. <laughs> Fuck out of here. Like, I, I. Yeah. Yeah, man. DJ My Burns. My favorite food is chicken tendies and fries. Probably should have had fewer of those during the NCAA tournament, Chubb. I don't give up. I know you don't. I. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not here for it. Right? Like, I, I'm not here for this whole thing where it's like, oh, man, DJ Burns, he is – Yeah, I don't want to hear about his waistline. I, I, I – you don't have to because Chubbs is out of the tournament. Yeah. He's out of the tournament. Yeah. And I, I love everybody who's like, all right, 6'9", 275. Get the <laughs> fuck out. He Shut the fuck up, Dude, Donnie. he was born at 300 pounds. <laughs> like, dude, he's 275. Chiseled. 275, bro. Two set, get <laughs> Two set two seventy five. Two seventy five. How was that eight point one block one rebound performance against NC State? <laughs> where you lost by thirteen. <laughs> oh man, boy. DJ Burns had a huge Monty. impact on that game. Monty. That's he you, you defense, maybe. You know. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Eight point. Man, did you see him against Duke? Duke is Duke. Please, DJ Burns. Mm -hmm. This is a tasty burger. DJ Burns. <laughs> oh, DJ Burns. No. DJ Burns. Oh, DJ. Look, NC State's better than at, at UNC. Hey, Monty. Whatever. Anyway, prizepicks.com. Use the promo code Monty. Don't put your ducats on DJ Burns. Zach Eddy tonight. Although UConn's probably got the best big man he's going to see. Just a but stalwartness. I, I'm, I'm just telling you now. Klingon's number is 13 and a half. I'm far more, I am far more willing to go 38 and a half on Zach Getty. Just, just, that's just, 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 you know, you know, that, that's where I would be on it. That's where I'd be on it. You know, I, I'm just, you know, you're just saying, you know, all right, cool. Let's it, see how bad we can mess up the comments section today. What's use it, what's your promo code be? Monty. Get 100% deposit matching. Then you, too, can afford a $5,000 Vuitton suit. It's annoying, dude. Is Don Staley the most unlikable person in basketball? Yeah, probably. It's got to be close. Yeah. Got to be close. Don Staley or Jim Harbaugh? Your mom. <laughs> your mom. I hate your mom more than anybody. <laughs> but, uh, oh, my God. Can you imagine if Don Staley and Jim Harbaugh were smashing? Because shit's going good. <laughs> Dude, macaque. My God, bro, that would be terrible. No, nah, I'm good. Terrible, terrible. Anyway, use the promo code Monty get 100 deposit matching. 
prizepicks.com download the app uh i appreciate everybody that dms me your wins and um you know like i i was talking to one cat about nico horner it's like i saw that play nico made gonna take him on prize picks no he, he, you need him to hit <laughs> you need him to hit now i i did tell i did tell lil kevy lil kevy uh kevin spradlin uh on instagram was asking me about baseball yesterday. What did I tell you about Cody Bellinger? Belly. Sprads. What did I tell you, Kevin? Yeah. Told you about Cody Bellinger. Little bing bing yesterday. Let's go. Might strike out the nine other at bats in the series. He's got one in him, which is what she said. Oh. Oh. Anyway, uh, my point <laughs> is baseball's phenomenal. The Masters this week. The mess. Who's ready for the Masters dude, this week? Stay hard, dude. I am. I'm ready for the Masters. 100%. I am ready for the Masters. I'm ready for my guy, Akshay Batia, not to make the cut. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. It is going to be amazing. Well, he's only playing with one shoulder. I mean, it's it's difficult. Two words. Two words. Max Homa. Yeah. Two words. Eat some pasta. Shut up. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> what? Well, See, you just wake up on some days. So Jake says to me this morning, hey, by the way, we're off on Friday. I'm going to going to the desert <laughs> gonna dip my cock in some sand my cacti churro yeah my cacti we're going full churro Macaque. okay uh, so apparently we're off on friday you're welcome by the way for what for giving you an off day on friday well, i don't need an off day uh -huh. the cock. i don't right it's fine okay it's fine uh good morning jimmy Otson. hello like number 21 uh let's get some of your comments rolling in here man i don't even where do I even begin? <laughs> Where do I even begin? Oh, Monty, that was a legal screen. Cap lock Friday Coog, illegal screen. Amen, Monty. I, I don't think it's that. It's not even an, an argument. No. You can't even argue it. By the way, nice name. It is. Exactly. It is. I mean, if that shot's not bad enough, and again, if you're pissed about this call, go talk to, to Paige Beckers. Learn how to run off a screen. And if that's not the image that tells you this is an illegal screen, look at her right leg. <laughs> she's not square to the target. Her elbow. Her, she's her, not inside her body. Her left elbow, her, her left knee, and her entire right fucking leg is outside <laughs> her frame. No, Monty, not a legal screen. It's legal because they never call it illegal. Yeah. It's because it's illegal. Because it's illegal. That's why they called it. I don't break the rules. Not illegal. <laughs> it's a vernal equinox. You can't make that call. Well, I get it. I get it. It's the fucking vernal equinox. I totally get it. I totally understand it. Okay, who's next? Um, let's see. It's the comments are dumping. Uh, Mike Smith. I'm glad that she has probably got. Uh, she has probably has got other young women <laughs> interested in the sport. <laughs> <laughs> some days it just takes more words i get it uh mike smith you could be right just held no interest for me nor does hockey or baseball there you go and there's nothing wrong with that if you're not a fan of of hot chicks playing basketball it's fine <laughs> <She's probably> <laughs> you know uh rick forrester west virginia got robbed before uconn i'm sure they did I'm sure they did. And they what were does all, that have to do with the price of tea in China? All yeah. they want to do is clean their coal. Yeah. You know, just give them a hose and a, and a brush and let them clean their coal, man. Yeah, dude. All right. Uh, same, Mike. Hockey and baseball playoffs might get me, but I like my hoops where a majority of the association jumps three feet high. Call me crazy, but I like athletic people in my athletics. Right, but women are athletic. Jake, they only jump three feet high. Right. You know. Uh, it, 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 you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. Um, RJ seem loner phone. It was like calling a slide too rough in baseball. No, no, it's, no not. it's not. No, it's not. No, it's dude. Next comment. I'm not here for him today. <laughs> next comment. Uh, Dakota tubs. Yeah, but it's Michigan. So no one cares. Well, this, see, that's a fair point. This is true. Yeah, this, this is true. Uh, South, uh, Eric and Raleigh, South Carolina is just on an entirely different level. Dawn Staley has her South Carolina team practice like a professional team. She's a great coach, but a detestable person. hundred percent. What the bullshit she pulled at BYU 
that she's just a detestable person. But I but I agree. Just from X's and O's, yeah, they, they play phenomenal basketball. Their their ability to space the floor and transition, and their their the the thing I noticed about them is their oh the player with the ball in transition is always aware of what's around them, what the options are around them. So they wind up finding the wide open three on the wing and they're going to make that at a really high rate. And that's why you end up losing to them. Not because South Carolina is so much better. They just create better opportunities for themselves. And that's they're well they coached. Yes. Don Staley's a good coach. Yeah. And a detestable human being. Uh, go black. Go Tigers. The thing is, if you say that, then you're labeled a sexist pig. This is probably true. Say what? I'm not sure. Um, uh, Scott of Greywater Watch, Cooper Flag next year. Yeah? yeah, but dude, did you see his jump shot mechanics? <laughs> Garbage, dude. And I'm not denying that dude is talented. He's what got size. He he's athletic. Right I think he's like six nine, six eight, like two forty ish, ish. Where is he? six nine? They list him at. So this guy's got great size. You know, he's a he 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 has all the potential in the world. Totally with you on that, dude. But go look on YouTube at his jump shot mechanics. They need work. They're not Lonzo bad, but they absolutely need some work. Six nine two thirty five. Yeah. So he has put on quite a bit of weight. He's going to Duke, by the way. Duke is Duke. Duke is Duke. And yes, I'm looking forward to watching him this coming season. Yeah, I, he's going to be. 100%. He, he'll be great. He'll be great, and he can be the next Duke villain. But they need him now. They need him now. Yeah. At college basketball, I think this is one of the least talented crop of college basketball players we have ever seen. I can't remember having this little star power in the in the NBA draft. Yeah, I just don't feel like college basketball has the rivalries anymore. Like you can put Duke and UNC on ESPN a hundred times if you want to, but if you don't have the names inside the game playing each other, if the Heat's not there. I don't really – it's not going to draw the 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 audience. And and that's where guys like Cooper Flagg, he's going to be a one-and-done 100%. Uh, but, certainly. But, but, but I that's the kind of guy that the game needs to be a three-year guy. But that's not how it is right now. And that's, that is why college football does so well because dudes can hang out in their team and 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 play at the highest level for – for for a ton of years, look at Stetson Bennett, right? Look at look at Stetson. Look at, Bennett. I, but I'm just telling you, this guy. Do you guys remember what they were saying about this scrub going into the draft? A Stetson Bennett. Do you, they are. Do, yeah, you're damn right. I did. This guy was wow. Like, hey, hey, Monty, Monty, did, did you know that Stetson Bennett's a seven year college football player? He had his locker reserved at Georgia before Kirby was even there. Like that's what we get in college football, and that's why college football lives on. Basketball is dying Stetson because Bennett. Buddy's going to go to Duke under Shire for one year and then go to the league. Yeah. So I, I don't know what you do about it. Uh, OG Gary, Bronny definitely getting drafted then G League. Yeah, we'll see. Depends on where he goes, right? Uh, Force Ghost Fabio, it's Monday. Hi, chat. And Monty's first bad take of this draft is Bronny being drafted. Okay, so I'm just asking, why wouldn't you take Bronny James? LeBron James Jr., why wouldn't you draft him? What are you losing here? If you get him outside the lottery. I never said take him top 10. Yeah. What did I say? I, I, I Essentially, if you're outside the lottery and you pass on Bronny James, you're crazy. Because what did he have? Four points at USC? Coming off of major heart surgery, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, explain to me again why you wouldn't take him. You're worried about health issues. Okay. He has played an entire season, a full-time starter minutes load, and his heart has passed every – he's tested weekly now at USC. So the health thing, not, not an issue. Uh, the basketball thing. Well, very clearly, Bronny averaging four points at USC, not a developmental factory, could have gone to any major college basketball program in the country. Had offer letters from Duke, had offer letters from Carolina, US, UCLA, uh, Arizona, like anywhere you want. Ohio State was all over him. Chose USC, wants to stay home, be in LA. Yeah. Okay, cool. But why wouldn't you want him on your team? If you were drafting him, 
Why wouldn't you want him on your team? He showed you elite court vision. Like he is, the one thing that he does, nobody argues, is he's an elite passer. He is an elite facilitator. Runs the break as well as any guard in college basketball. Does not shoot the ball well. Right. And isn't on a squad where you need him to finish for you, essentially. He probably is a 10-point, 10-assist guy. That's probably what he projects to. Six to 10 points, I think he's a double-assist guy in the NBA. And I think he's probably one of those guys who have played 12 years in the NBA. Like, he'll have a long NBA career. And if he's in the right situation, I absolutely think he can be a guy that you you can have in your starting lineup for seven years. Better or worse? Like, or, so would you say, like, a, I don't know. Point, I think he's a, a Rajon Rondo. A Rajon Rondo. A, a, you know, again, Ricky Rubio's a Euro, but, like, somebody who can initiate your offense. Brownie, better better I, player than Lonzo Ball, in yes. my opinion, in the NBA. Yeah. Got the yeah. physical build to be. Better leader. Too. He I has think a lot he, of leadership qualities. I think there's no doubt that Bronny James is a guy that can be on your team for yeah, six, seven years. I think the only question is is Bronny is his leadership is his leadership ability strong enough that you can play him at the one, let him initiate the offense, and then kind of get out of the way, but lead but get your team into the right position possession and possession out because the league doesn't have a lot of that believe it or not the league does not have uber effective point guard guys just falling off trees that is a valuable thing in the league right now so Bronny can show hey yeah i got some handle i can i i can understand the play and i can understand that i don't need to pull a page beckers when we're trying to set screens if he can do that and understand where he needs to be and what he needs to do to get guys in a great position he's gonna be fine He's going to be fine. He's going to have to, at some point, become a 35, 36% three-point shooter. Because right now he's not. He's an elite defender. He's got great size, 6'4", 220. Yeah, he's 26% from three on the season. The, the, the kid is a, a uh, he is a really good defender. Does he have upside on the three ball? I, I don't know the answer to that. Um, he's always going to be a good rebounder because he's got positional size. So he's always going to be more physical than the guy on the other side of him. Yeah. Um, the biggest question will be, does he ever become a 35 plus percent three point shooter in the NBA? If he does that, forget it. He'll have a 15 year NBA career. If he, if you can put him in the corner and he can knock down a corner three, or if he can stand at the top of the key and slide and be a, a, a pick and pop player in the NBA, He'll have a 15-year NBA career. A lot of people... Not close. Uh, and again, I'm not saying this is the best comparison, but a lot of people were were comparing Bronny to like the Norman Powells of the world. And my big thing with Ooh. that comparison is that Norman Powell is somebody who likes the physical. He's a tenacious defender. Oh, well, so does, so does Bronny. The problem is Norman Powell's a really good shooter. Yeah. L Bronny is not a really good shooter. He is, to, what did you say, 26%. 26%. That's not that's not going to be good enough. But admittedly, admittedly, we've seen we've seen guys, uh, you know, way raise their their percentages. Like, you know, over the course of a three year timeline, go from being absolutely garbage from three to being you know thirty five percent, you know, thirty six percent, like real, like not forty, but serviceable. Like, hey, you give him you give him five a night, he'll make three of them, two of them. Like, I think you look at what he was at Sierra Canyon. You look at what he's been at U USC. At Sierra, he was that guy who, when the other, because he was on Sierra Canyon basically as a pay to play school. Uh, the best players, the Pippins, like the, the best high school players came together at Sierra Canyon in LA, which has become a basketball mecca. And they played together, and that team was unbelievable. Now, one out of every five games, Bronny was the best player on that team. Mm hmm. Problem is, he was all too comfortable becoming a facilitator for them. And if dudes weren't hitting, he would, you know, he would he would take off. He didn't play that way at USC. He was probably their best defensive player at USC. He's a guy that played really because he plays really fast. So he's an excellent rebounder because he aggressively rebounds. He crashes the glass. And then, I mean, before you blink, he's at the half court stripe. Right. There's value in that in the NBA. There is no question about that. 
Again, the only thing that I question is, can he become a, a 35, 36% three-point shooter in the NBA? Bottom line. That's yeah. the that's the only question you need to know. The, the only question that has to be answered about Bronny. And if you are outside the lottery and you don't take a shot on him, I think you're crazy. Yeah. Because right now, you and I both know what he's doing. He is putting himself in his very best position for workouts in the in the pre-draft combine. That's all he's doing. He is going to jump high. He is going to look good. And my question is, will he shoot the three well in, in the pre-draft workouts and in the pre-draft camp that they have in Chicago every year? Yeah. If he does that, he will definitely get drafted outside the lottery. Yeah. I don't think there's any doubt about and, and, it. And that's an advantage for him, too, I feel like. All he's got to do is go out and just just be good. Don't Don't brick your entire workout. Don't, like, be absolutely terrible. We know he's got the athleticism. We know he's quick. We know he's got the body for it. But but don't be absolutely awful at your combine workout. You better shoot. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, Jimmy, this is exactly right. If Bronny can hit a corner three, he'll have a 12-year career. If my grandma had wheels, she'd be a bite. Well, you're exactly right. I think it is, it is just one of those things where you have to figure out if he if you can make him into something other than nothing. Because I think there is a real opportunity. If you look at the draft order, you guys, you you look at the draft order and and where where that where that points to, he's not going to be. You were you would not draft him in the top ten. Why would you do that? They, because there's other guys that project, but outside of the lottery, I, I'm just asking. If you are, let's see. If you are the Atlanta Hawks at 10, the Bulls at 11, OKC at 12, Portland, Sac, Philly, Miami, Toronto, New Orleans. If you're if you're New Orleans, who's got 18 and 19, the Knicks at 20, Orlando at 21, Cleveland, Phoenix, Milwaukee, the Knicks, Washington, the Jazz at 27, Denver at 28, Minnesota at 29, and Boston at 30. I'm just asking. Are you going to draft like the Denver Nuggets are are supposedly interested in a kid out of the Africa uh, Academy? You're going to draft a kid out of Africa instead of Bronny James. Do the math on that and explain to me why you would do that. If if you are the Knicks, you're going to take a, a, probably a, a point guard shooting guard. You're not going to expect him to start, right? You're not going to expect him to impact your lineup right away. Right. Why would you not take Bronny James? I mean, the upside on Bronny is maybe you get LeBron for a year in a Knicks uniform. Stranger things have happened. Yeah. Right? But if you are, if you're the Cleveland Cavaliers at 22, you're not going to, you're not going to take a shot on LeBron James Jr.? <laughs> yes, you are. Yeah, you are. I would love to have the argument that you're not going to draft him. If you are outside the lottery, why would you not take him? Yeah, it's a great question. Because the even if you just get LeBron coming to your games, why would you not draft him? I don't know the answer to that question either. Yeah. Because there's just no reason not to draft him. All right. Stephen Smith for $5. Calipari leaving Kentucky has serious impact on the rest of college basketball and will change the landscape of coaching. Absolutely. You're, I disagree with you. I appreciate the $5. John Calipari has proven that he is no longer an elite coach. I don't know what you mean by it will have a serious impact on the rest of college basketball. Yeah, what, what impact will it have? So wait. A coach that's making, I think, eight and a half million dollars at Kentucky, by every account, and I think Pete Thamel had it first. Everybody is reporting that he is taking significantly less than eight and a half million dollars, and that his contract, uh, the top end of his contract, is tied to and winning the NCAA tournament. How is that going to? impact the rest of college basketball and change the landscape of coaching. I don't know either. I have no idea. He, 
there is this stigma around John Calipari that he's some elite coach. Has he won at Kentucky? Yes. Has he been to the, the Final Four? Yes. Do you remember when? No, you don't. <laughs> because John Calipari can't coach a one-and-done team. When John Calipari was recruiting Book and AD, that's when he was good. When kids couldn't just bail on the on the game of college basketball after a year, he was good. When kids had the ability to leave, he has not been good since. They, they, I, I don't know what I, maybe I'm missing, and please feel free to educate learn little old Monty here. Yeah, can you learn him? But I don't see that John Calipari has any impact on on the rest of college basketball and changing the landscape of coaching. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. He's going down the street. I agree. It's akin to him. It's akin to him going next door and banging the neighbor's wife. I mean, I don't know if you're Kentucky. I, I, I don't know how you are not. Are you, are you not like sending pizza and beer over to Arkansas to get them to hire John? <laughs> Cause you wanted to fire him, but he has a $30 million buyout remaining on his contract and you were not going to buy him out for that. Yeah. They did you a favor. I, I don't think it's changing with all due respect. This is not changing the landscape of coaching. Uh, Aaron Wilson gifted a Monty show member. Okay. There we go. Aaron is always good to see you. I think John Calipari is one of the most overrated names in college sports. Yeah, he is. There's no I, doubt. It's just my opinion. Just my opinion. Him and Dabo can hang out. You know, I I, I don't know. I guess uh, maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. You know, uh, let's see. Ball dad, not the same. He was walking chaos. He was walking chaos. You know, uh, Elaine Tran, those kids out of Africa are talented. There's no doubt. But it's one out of every hundred. And nobody knows their name. Ronnie's going to sell you jerseys and t-shirts. He's going to sell some tickets. He'll bring, let's say you, and I don't think he'd be a first year G League player. I truly do not. Um, but even if you put him in your G League affiliate, he's going to sell tickets. I, I don't know why you would not. And if you're the Lakers and you have a chance to draft him and you don't, I don't know what you're doing. I'm just saying. Uh, because the hassle of having LeBron James is not worth the headache. What hassle is there in having LeBron James? Uh, it's a kid. Okay, which is what I meant to say. I just didn't say that. What's the hassle of having Bron's kid there? I'm just curious. Has LeBron been a distraction at USC? Has LeBron been a distraction at Sierra? Has LeBron been like all in the coach's ear? LeBron's one of the best coaches ball dads you're ever going to see he stays out of the way like he doesn't lebron's a lebron is the kind of parent that you want your players to have yeah i think comparing him to lavar ball is a little harsh bro it, i yeah that's one of the worst comments that might be the worst comment of the day so far uh dakota tubbs calipari just wanted to get away from the boosters in lexington i get it I think the boosters in Lexington were far more eager to get away from John. I think he is, I think he's one of the most overrated coaches in all of college. He just does, he is not one. Yeah, he's clearly fallen off. And I and I think that's the issue is that you have to figure out how to win in today's landscape, not 10 years ago. Yeah, I don't I don't know what that means. James, Oakey Light. The only way I'm watching the eclipse is if there's a taco truck nearby. <laughs> if I could go and see the eclipse, I would. <laughs> There's not going to be another full eclipse for 2044. 2044. Yeah. Yeah. 20 years. What are we talking about? Uh, RJC loaner phone. Calipari getting same money. It's just making Kentucky. No, he's not getting the same. Where do you get this stuff, dude? Like, I would love to know where you're. Like, what in what world do you think that Arkansas is paying buddy the same money? Calipari's contract is expe expected to have an overall base salary far less than the eight and a half million dollars he's making at Kentucky. Oh my, he's getting the same money. The deal is expected to be incentive laden with the ability to pass his total number at Kentucky. In other words, go out and make the school money, then you can get paid. 
if anybody I, like, I, I, I don't know if it's just Monday. I don't know. Cocaine is a hell of a drug. He's not making the same money at, at Arkansas. He's, ma he's making significantly less base. He only makes more money if he wins the NCAA tournament. When's the last time Arkansas was relevant in the tournament? And when's the last time John was relevant in the tournament? Did you read anything? Uh, like, um, um, this is going to be, it's just going to be that day. Uh, Mike Calipari is no Mike Gundy. Well, that's, you know, that's, yeah. I'm a man. Is that John's brother or where are we going here? Uh, Elaine Tran, Kentucky is so stressful because the fan base is so demanding. It is. The fans in, in Lexington are impossible. But again, let's not sugarcoat this stuff, man. Nobody was saying the fans were demanding and the boosters were asking too much when, to your point, you had Book and Anthony Davis and all this talent running through the program, right? Nobody nobody was complaining. Oh, that's right. Now you haven't won in God knows how long, and now everyone's complaining. This is about winning and losing. That's it. It has nothing to do with the fans or boosters or whatever. John's got to figure his his stuff out. That's what this is about. At Kentucky, John Calipari is 198 and 65. Um, he has won, he won the NCAA, uh, championship 38 and two in 2011, 2012. Then he went right to the NIT final four in 2014, 15. Um, has not been even close to that since. Sweet 16, 2017, 2018. Missed the tournament 2021, 64, 32, and 64 the last three years. Jeez. The guy, he, he is one of those guys. And yes, I understand he won 400, he's won 400 games. He's not the same guy he was at Memphis. He's not the same guy he was at UMass. That do you guys understand that he's 60 years old now? He's not young anymore. This idea that he is some legendary guy, I agree, he's not elite anymore. He's not. And he's not young anymore. He's not young anymore. Yeah. Aaron Wilson, Chris Beard should have stayed at tech. Probably. 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 Zesty. Morning, Monty and Jake. Hey, How about those Royals six and four and sweeping the Sox? <laughs> Starting pitching has been nails. I mean, the Royals. Matt, bro, it's the White Sox. Can't wait to get that new stadium there. Huh? Mm, man, wow. Uh, he'd have had a champ. No, he wouldn't have. No, he wouldn't have. Uh, Monty, it is so wrong. Uh, is so wrong about African ballers. Wakanda forever. Yeah, you know. Man, wow. Uh, look at that. Tanner Plummer. Sup, gang. What did I miss? Man, just everything, dude. I mean, nice <laughs> of you to show up on time. Denver winning championship sells tickets. I, I, it's amazing. And that has to do with Bronny. What? Uh, but Beard would have won us a net. No, he wouldn't have. It, you're, it, dude, y'all you know. are, y'all are different today, man. I don't, I don't like you're just on some, mm. uh, big daddy magic. Oh, okay. Who's now on the radio as a radio star. Uh, hey, play a mad respect for your show. Thanks, buddy. Victor's the way. Good to see you. Um, <laughs> RJC loaner phone. Calling people out for bad taste. Guy, you just said that Buddy's getting paid the same money when he very clearly is not. Now you want to criticize someone for a bad take? Dude, come on. Holy cow. Uh, maybe we need to do self-effacing Monday. Bro, do we need a reset? Is that what this is, dude? Do we need to, like, restart? Or or what are we doing here? You know. it's we, You know how long it's been since we've had a show restart? Because the comment section's been that bad? Is it because it's the solar eclipse? Yeah, is that what it is? How about how about Marjorie Taylor Greene? It's the fucking vernal equinox. Saying that God sent earthquakes and solar eclipses. <laughs> <laughs> because the world needs to repent. I hope Merkel listens. Hey, asshole. Uh, it's called science. <laughs> we know. Monty, it's God. Do you guys understand that it's a scientific equation? Which God means, bless. Which means it's a math problem. We know when every solar eclipse is going to happen. In God's name, image, and likeness. 
I'm just saying, I believe it was the National Oceanic Your Mom's Hot Association, the people who do the weather. Right. I think they have a chart. Facial recognition. That <laughs> facially <laughs> recognizes every solar eclipse. Yeah. To like 2,900. Stay I, hard. It's, it's 2024. They're they, so good at it. They've got it mapped out for it's 500 a, it's a, years. It's a science problem, shitbag. <laughs> they know when every solar eclipse is going to happen, you mook. Like I'm not too familiar with that. Mom, God sent the solar eclipse because he's pissed at the world. We really did. <laughs> we know. Ev it's a I hope. I love at the end science. of the tweet, too. She's like, I hope people listen. Science. Science. Earthquakes are not new. Monty, the ground shook. This is new, innovative, world-ending stuff out of God. You know, there are thousands of earthquakes every day, right? So-called well, experts. Because there's so much sin, Monty. Well, <laughs> I don't even argue. <laughs> right? I'm a sinning motherfucker over here, man. God's not... <laughs> Monty, God is so upset that he's opening up the crust of the earth. You, do you guys understand... Like, I love that. No, I'm not getting into God. Shut today. the fuck up, Donnie. I'm not getting into God today. <laughs> I don't have the bandwidth for it. Solar eclipses are not about your God. They're about <laughs> fucking science. Let's run. We know when. <laughs> it makes me crazy that people are like, he farted. I warned you, God was coming back. I hope people smell. Make America smell again. <laughs> Masca. <laughs> Science. Science. Please. Uh, MJD, MTJ did not blind me with science. No, she did not. No, she did not. <laughs> the world's ending, Monty. Solar eclipse. <laughs> Monty. <laughs> okay. Do you know how dark it's going to... What did the... What did the <laughs> The old famous um, 300 soldiers. You know the movie 300? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And people are like, oh, they're... <laughs> so they, they were fighting the Greeks, I think. Yes. And they had these... You know the Greeks shoot arrows? Yes. And there's a famous scene in the movie where the Greeks shoot all the arrows and it causes the sun to be blotted out. And people are like, there was a solar eclipse... That's why the 300 soldiers died. <laughs> it's like, no, they died because they got hit with a bunch of spears. And I would also point out the most famous saying in, in, in the 300 movie is it's too dark. We can't fight because of the spears. And Mr. Gerard Butler, or whatever six pack and yeah. a huge cock said was, well, then we'll fight in the shade. Yeah. It's not, it's the spear. It's not an eclipse. God didn't bring an eclipse to kill the 300, you moke. I'm still human. Monty, John Calpar is getting the same money, whether it's bright out or it's dark out, okay? Science. What did you say, Tanner? By the way, I need to get the membership. Uh, I need to get my membership back. But I can't find the link. Do you guys have yeah, it? It's probably on Venmo, dude. It's probably on Venmo. It's, okay. It's after the <laughs> don't the eclipse is here. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Yeah. Marge says we're fucked. Yeah. So don't worry about it. Yeah. Uh it's it's just I don't know. I I can't see the link to yeah. join because it's my channel, but I believe it. You can go on. Just get on a computer. Come That's to fine. the channel. There's a join button. It was the Persians. I apologize. It was the Persians, correct. Correct. I'm a terrible person. Uh, Giggity, what's worse, MTG shit take or the fact that there are thousands of people that believe her? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, so, do you guys understand that this is what we do now? And look at look at all these marketing pieces as part of the eclipse too. This is what I love. So, oh got, yeah, you've got MTG out here saying the things she's saying. Then, then on top of the world ending, before the world ends, you can get a variety of different offers. Krispy Kreme has donuts. <laughs> Who <knew? laughs> An Eclipse donut that has an Oreo on top of it. Um, pizza. Now, listen, listen. Let me take that. James, this is this is your moment. 
I know pizza. I know that. I know pizza like I'm Zion Williamson. I'm a carb eating motherfucker. Or DJ Burns. <laughs> okay. Um, 7 Eleven pizza, and I hate to admit this, and it's been, I, I can't tell you, it's been decades. 7 Eleven pizza is good. Mm -hmm. Okay. 7 Eleven pizza has buy one, get one free pizza. Now, but you're not a Eclipse. pep guy. You're not a pep guy. Not at all. Not at all. Yeah. But 7-Eleven pizza is gas. Yeah. Uh, pizza Hut pizza, mm, not the so Eclipse gas. Eclipse Hut. $12 any pizza. As long as it's hand-tossed or thin and crispy. So not any pizza. Smoothie King. Smoothie King is offering you a free smoothie and Eclipse glasses if you are in the solar eclipse path. It's an Eclipse Bl Berry Blitz smoothie. Okay. Now, I think the best one is actually back to my childhood. Remember we talked about Lil Debbie? Yes. Then there's Moon Pies. You can get a box of six Moon Pies on discount today. Boom. And they're actually really good. Boom. I like Moon Pies. Maybe I should get some Moon Pies. Yeah. Please. The yeah. Eclipse is a science thing. Yeah. This isn't the world ending, dude. The Eclipse happens... I, and you're you're right. They've got them mapped out for like however long it is. Like they know. I want to say that no uh, Noah or whatever they call the stupid thing. It's to like twenty nine hundred. Yeah. They have because all it is, and I don't mean to get on science, Monty. All it is, it's a scientific equation about the way the planets rotate. But Monty, how the can sun, they rotate if the Earth is flat? Come good on. Point. The sun. <laughs> <laughs> the moon and the earth. Yeah. It's all a scientific equation. Right. How do you think we know the exact date that every solar eclipse is going to happen? Well, MTG told us. It's not. <laughs> I I get it. The you, hysteria you guys, around the eclipse is wild to you me. You get it. James, oh, the God. eclipse will last less than four minutes. The song Total Eclipse of the Heart lasts four minutes and 28 seconds. I'd rather watch the music video. Listen, if you are in the path and you don't go see the solar eclipse. I don't know what you're doing. It's super cool. Yeah. Make sure you have glasses. Don't look at it. But Make Donnie sure looked at it. Science. <laughs> Make sure you have glasses. But if you have a chance to see the solar eclipse, it is quite literally one or two in your lifetime. Yeah. Complete solar eclipses. Total it's incredibly rare. It's very rare. It's incredibly rare. Yes. RJC loner phone. Oh, that should be good. You get an 8.2 minus, uh, you get 8.2 minus Arkansas salary still owed to Calipari. You get eight point. No, 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 you don't. Okay. You do you, <laughs> you do you, man. Hopefully that loaner phone's working good for you. You do you. You do you. Steve Stepanek, congratulations to Cody Rhodes, the new WWE champion. Wow, dude, man. Wow. Dude. And his name is John C. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, San Diego State Glenn, that's my new excuse. Can't find the membership link. Yeah. It's a real bitch out there, yeah. isn't it? It's a tough world we live in. Uh, Aaron Wilson, Tanner, hit the dollar sign bottom right of the phone. There you go. See? Christopher Shannon, MTG is what's keeping our country from becoming like Venezuela. Oh, I, I don't know how we've ever done it. Man. Uh, Giggity, good morning. Your salvation will be saved as long as you have Trump's Bible for a low, low price of $60. <laughs> <laughs> so just real quick. So several of the people that went to Trump's fundraiser. Yeah. That supposedly where he raised um, $50 million. I think it was, and it was uh, $800,000 per plate at this fundraiser. They came out and talked to the media. Um, it turns out they didn't pay anything to get in. They essentially pledged to donate $800,000 over the course of the presidential election cycle. That's not fundraising. <laughs> and did you... I. I mean, it's the eclipse. We're all going to die today anyway. Yeah. Why not? 
Uh, did you guys hear about his bond trouble? Dude, this is this is kind of <laughs> wild, bro. Honestly. So Donnie goes into court. He loses this victimless crime where he overvalued and all the real estate shit in New York. Right. And people are like, it's New York. It's Latidia. It's Letitia. And you know it is. Anyway, he loses this case in New York. So he has to come up with a, over about a half a billion dollars in bond money. Right. Can't do it. It's unfair. Okay. Well, you're a billionaire. Oh, wait. Okay. Um, all right. We'll lower that because you say it's untenable and nobody will have that money. So you have to come up with whatever it was, $175 million in a bond. Comes up with the bond from a guy that essentially is a loan shark, right? The guy isn't liquid enough to post the bond because what a bond is, if you lose the case, that money immediately goes to the victims. So the bond is being disputed. The guy who wrote the bond is doing media interviews. And you know what he said? Oh, yeah, we offered to cover the whole half billion dollar bond. He said no. And the guy who provided the bond is saying he would have covered the half billion dollar bond. <laughs> but Trump did. Trump said no, we'll get it lowered. And then he covers the $175 million and doesn't have the liquidity to do it. Nice work. I, I How? Yeah. You're a billionaire. And now he's Donnie is so worried he is selling his Las Vegas hotel to try and get the guy is just I, I don't know how you get out of the situation that he's in. Uh OG Gary, who cares about the eclipse? I think it's super cool. You if really I could don't see care? it. Dude, if I could see it, I would absolutely look at yeah, it. Yeah, dude. And I think in it, where we are, it's only like a 20% eclipse yes, or whatever. That's it's exactly like a real right. small amount. Exactly right. Yeah. Uh, San Diego State, Glenn, 7-Eleven drone delivers too. Good pizza. Too. Oh, they're pizza. I'm telling you. You guys, there's you know two things. You so good, dude? Why? They got the, you guys remember Quiznos? They had the they had the cooker where they the put the toaster stuff through it. Yeah, that's what Seven Eleven does, dude. That's why it's so good. You know what else is really good? And, and again, I don't speak from experience very clearly. Right. The taquitos. <sighs> the taquitos. It's uh, taquitos and pizza. They used to be good. Right. Kind of like Jake. Right. He used to be good. Right. They used to be. It's been Kinda. at least ten years. Like I haven't bit. had. I have not had. The last time I had 7-Eleven taquitos was Sacramento. Okay. What's your favorite gas station brand? Oh, it's Maverick by far. Maverick by far. Okay. Maverick's I, food agreement. is. Yeah, I'm in agreement. Yeah. I haven't had a breakfast sandwich at Maverick in a few weeks now, but I can't remember what they call them. They have these little po hot pockets. Yeah. Of yeah. Orgasmic breakfast food. And it's amazing. 7-Eleven changed the pizza and it's not new. Oh, no. Did they really? Damn. Their pizza used to be so good. Um, come on the big screen. See me on the big screen. Okay. Are you yawning? Yes. You're off on Friday. Dude, that what doesn't do you mean? mean I'm not up at 4 a.m. today. Dickweed. Totally agree on 7-Eleven pizza. Fresh out of the oven is the best. No, yes. but can we get can we get others to confirm whether they've changed it or not? Because if they change it, that's really disappointing. That would suck. That would that suck. would honestly suck. Shooter Texas saw an advertisement. An advertisement. For a local place, they're offering solar eclipse discounts on enemas. Not enemas. sure how that is applicable. Damn, eclipse has everyone going nuts. Ah. It, the world's not. Why do we automatically go to the world is ending? Oh, man, I took a dump today. Oh, no, the world's ending. I know, Risa. Like, that's what we do. Oh, uh, the UPS Monty. guys here, the world's ending. Monty, I didn't have a bidet today, so the world's ending. <sighs> Dude, why? Uh, San Diego State Glen, little Debbie, Lil Debbie is sloppy seconds compared to hostess. <laughs> <laughs> sloppy now, seconds. Last time we went to Mod Pizza, <laughs> uh, we had the red velvet hmm. ho ho. Those were bomb. Gas. Uh, Noel Ramirez, the whole 300 movie was just told by the perspective of Dilios. That's why it was so exaggerated, like the guy with the goat head in Monsters. And the undead army. Yeah, it's a movie. And it was a good movie. Too, but the real head. life story, the quote is historically documented. Like it is, that quote lives back. Is it true or not? I don't know. The origins of the quote are back to the times 
um, you know, of the Persians and yeah. Uh, well, those those arrows blot out the light. It makes it dark. Well, then we'll fight in the shade. Yeah, that that's one of them. You know, Monty Nye, the science guy. Yes, you know, uh, we have the mythology exactly right. <laughs> exactly right. Uh, giggity. Whoa. Lasting four minutes is something to be proud of. See, I wasn't going to make any comments about it, but I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> OG Gary, if you've seen one of them, you've seen them all. Okay. That's facts. They're all basically the same movie. They yeah. blinded me with science. Okay. Uh, Donnie looked at it and he turned out all right. Well, cause he, he drank bleach. That's how you fix it. Uh, <laughs> it's Claudio. Dude, you have to put light up there in the butthole. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm in the path and it's cloudy science. Oh no. Is it cloudy? Damn. Sorry to hear that. Texas. Uh, Apple is offering free loaner phones during the eclipse. <laughs> Dude, can you, do you still have the number on your phone? Do you still have the Apple support number on your phone? I do ask Apple if they're offering loaner phones during the solar Why? eclipse. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, Hey, Hey guys. Uh, are you guys offering, any loner phones if my iPhone dies during the eclipse? Are you offering <laughs> loner phones <laughs> if the solar eclipse damages my cam camera? Camera. <laughs> <laughs> okay, see what they say. Are you offering loner phones? If the solar eclipse damages my camera, <laughs> please choose an option from the list below. Oh, okay. Now, so we support. have options. Send. There you go. They're sending me the technical support. Okay. All right. I'll let you know what they say. Um, let's see. RJC man. I'm going really slow for you bots. I understand it's a frontal lobe issue. Right, uh, thanks. Like you're just smarter than everybody man. else, man. Wow. RJ Loner phone. Uh, I'll never forget when Donnie stood in front of a church and held the Bible upside down and backward at that. Calipari walked away from Kentucky because there's too many rich boosters trying to tell him how to do his job. That is why uh, Mac Brown is at North Carolina and not Texas. Same thing. Well, he'd have got fired there, I think. Why do we just assume it's the boosters? Why can't we assume that maybe he doesn't know how to put a winning product together? in this era of college basketball. Yeah. Like. I know <laughs> it, it is what it is. Uh, RJ loaner phone. No one is walking away from 30 million. Uh, and best way to offset the buyout is to have it. Yeah. You, you're so right. I don't know how we've done this show without your knowledge. Marcus Emmert, you have had it. Have you had Casey's pizza? I have not. Nah. Um, let's see. Um, Papa Murphy's good pizza. Uh, Aaron Wilson, 7-Eleven pizza here is dog food. Oh, no. Is it really that bad? Um, I hope it's not yeah, that's that rough, bad. dude. If it's that bad, that's rough. I mean, is it is it like clearly just cheap frozen cardboard or like like how rough is it? Because I remember like when I was in middle school and high school, 7-Eleven pizza was like the thing. That's so good. So good. Aaron Wilson, too much legit pizza in Lubbock. I've heard Texas has good pizza. I've not had pizza in Texas. Uh, okay, you talked me into it. I'll go to the lake and see the eclipse, but can you tell me, tell the out-of-towners to leave at 2 p.m.? I need to be in Waco tonight at 6. Okay. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I was wrong about that. Uh, let's see. Cap Lock F. Fry Coog. Get an extra pair of Eclipse glasses for a phone and take a picture or risk frying your phone and needing a loaner phone. Let's see. Apple is asking. Um, if I break my phone during the Eclipse, <clears throat> do you offer loaners? Let's see. There you go. Uh, do you have free loaners? There you go. Okay. Uh, 7-Eleven has the best food in Utah, Bacavos for all. Yeah. Yeah. That's my guy right there, bro. Bacavos. <laughs> Elaine Tran says Bucky's. Bucky's Shooter Texas says, OG Gary, 7-Eleven is the best brand for food and concessions and Chevron for gas only, dude. 
Chevron gas is good. Chevron gas is good, but Maverick has, has them beat by fine, uh, by a lot. Uh, you are a qualified person. I'll be able to find the best resolution for this specific issue you ha are having at the moment. Thank you. <laughs> Last I checked, I don't think 7-Eleven didn't change their pizza. So you're saying they did? Okay. I have no idea what he's saying. Uh, Chrissy, if you live in Pennsylvania, Wawa is the go-to shop for all things. Okay. OG Gary, I can confirm that my in-laws and tons of friends own 7-Elevens. I can ask and I'll let you all know. Let's do this. Let's do this. Dakota Tubbs, uh, Monty, I wiped from back to front today. The world is for sure ending. What are you doing? That Dakota? is disgusting. What did Putin tell you to do that? Like, what the hell happened, dude? Did you just wake up and you use the wrong technique? Like, like, how do you, how do you, like, how does that even happen? You went back to front. I'm in a full on. What will the eclipse do to my phone conversation with Apple right now over text? <laughs> uh, that's terrible news. Aaron. Where is this good pizza in Lubbock? I am hoping to come up and do a follow-up video on the construction in a few weeks. Please share about pizza in Lubbock. <laughs> okay, Max Verstappen wins again. Nobody cares. Uh, Dakota Tubbs, is Apple tech support about to validate RJ loaner phone? He, they may. <laughs> what is a loaner phone? Is that a phone who doesn't like being around other phones? Oh, you mean a loaner phone. Get it? See, the, 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 it's the, like a loner, loner and loner, and like all a kind drifter. Of together. He, the loner phone that comes in on a, a freight like train, like a mook, like a mook. Hey, everybody, look at this. Oh my God, Tanner figured it out. The Super Soaker is officially returned. Soaker is back, folks. Exactly. Let's right. go, baby. Hey, Tanner figured it out. <laughs> KC boss, Cal just signed his retirement gig. Good for him. No, he didn't. He signed with Kentucky. He, he went to Arca but he's making more same, money. Same and, and more. You and, know, like in the, you and know. they're going to provide him a loaner phone and it's going to be, eclipse. it's going to work. It's the eclipse. <laughs> it's the eclipse. His first hire, <laughs> MTJ. <laughs> it's MTG, but MTJ loaner phone. Never mind. Yeah. More. Dakota, as we know from Giving Friday, Tanner is technically, has technical issues. Yes. Uh, Aaron Wilson, clearly it's cheap cardboard. Okay. Cam Harrison, hello. I remember Pistol Pete's Pizza from the 90s. Okay. Mike Smith, soaking during the eclipse will result in the Big Bang. Wow, bro. Lover boy. <laughs> wow. Yes, it will. I've heard that. The Big Bang. Big and uh, happy birthday to Mike Smith today. How do I know it's his birthday? He told me. And everybody this in the your chat. beloved. Are you somebody that's like, hey, it's my birthday today? No. Hey, this is my friend Jake. It's his birthday today. Yeah, so I did. <laughs> <laughs> do you like celebrating birthdays? Yeah, I mean, it's fun. Yeah, it's a good time. Gives Mike you a is 70. Mike Smith is 72 years old. So everybody wish him a happy 72nd. Uh, will you guys do a show from all uh, the top truck stops in the Big 12 and do food reviews for football season? No. Nah. That's on uh, Oak State James's channel. Yeah. You know. Okie State and stuff. Okie Light. UW Fan Jim, they changed the dough so it rises more, but it's crunchy unless you get it right out of the oven. I would, you got to get it fresh. Sorry, James, but the traffic on IH35 around Waco is going to be a nightmare because of the eclipse. Good luck. Aaron Wilson, Bucky's has the best food. RJC loaner phone. J2H gets sushi at the gas station. He won't get sushi no, dude, at the sushi I don't, place. I don't do sushi, bro. Uh, Tanner, 7-Eleven didn't change their pizza last I checked. Okay. Uh, used to like sheets. Okay. Okay. Uh, watch Apple shuts off, uh, uh Monty's phone. <laughs> okay. They're okay. still checking in on the solar eclipse situation. I have a moaner phone. Well, a moaner phone. I thought porn home was illegal in Utah. <laughs> Because it's illegal. Because it's illegal. Uh, sorry because for it's illegal. Sorry for taking too long finding the membership. As you all know, soaking is a full time job. One hundred percent, dude. I yeah. mean, you gotta you gotta come to the surface at some point. Yeah, mom stopped by today. Huh? Yeah. Uh, big blue horses. The masters, a tradition unlike any other. One hundred percent. Unless dude. you're Jake, and then you're not going to watch. Uh, James Shooter, I will go up three seventeen and then go Highway eighty four to get around thirty five. Okay, I have a plan, dude. Can you save the map quest for another time, please? That's what I'm saying. Uh, Eric and Raleigh Calipari is going to get Bronny in the portal. There you go, there you go. 
Mountain Mama. Happy birthday, Mike. Backwoods Sexy. Okay. I didn't uh, tell anyone it was my birthday last year. Okay. Uh, if you don't take 35, you will miss out on checks on on the check stop. That is a crime. Okay. Okay. The check stop. Uh, Ed. I'm sorry. Ed Enriquez. One guy from Italy in Lubbock, right across from the campus. I like it. Tanner Plummer, a member for 15 months. Wow. Let's go, baby. Got a boy, Tanner. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Okay. Real quick. Yeah. Real quick. Yeah. Um, do we do the Super League thing today? What time is it? Um, 7.30. Okay. Apple, oh, Apple has replied. <laughs> Dude, my phone is off. What the fuck? <laughs> what Dude, the they, fuck? Went, they went solar eclipse mode on you, bro. It's dark. <laughs> there it is. And it turned back on. Thank you. Jesus. <laughs> oh, wait. It's science. Never mind. Yeah. Um, I said, uh, will the eclipse break my phone? Not break, but might uh, be chances it will affect your device. Oh, okay. Okay. Can I take If it, quote, pictures? affects my <laughs> device, can I get a loader? <laughs> okay. good, good question. If it affects my device, can I get a loaner <laughs> while my device is being unaffected? Question mark. Let's see what they say. Okay. We're making progress. Okay. So there is this whole, should we do the college football super league or do it tomorrow? We can do it tomorrow. It's fine. We're good. Yeah. It's yeah. not going to change. Yeah. It ain't going to change. Yeah. Between today and tomorrow. Um, yeah. Real quick. Real quick. Yeah. Hold on. Hang on. Uh, all right. Here we go. <laughs> What are we doing in Phoenix? <laughs> Can somebody explain to me why the Phoenix Suns suck? Well, they don't have any talent, Bonnie. They lost First to, team all Kentucky. to fat ass in, in the Pelicans last night. Devin Booker was 0 of 6 from 3, dominant in the mid-range. Kevin Durant is Kevin Durant. I think he had 11 points in, he was 0 of 37 from three. So, may I know, uh, do you have Apple Care? I do have Apple Care. You know. <laughs> Dude, they're going to say. <laughs> this is going to be fun. <laughs> um, the Lakers lost. Yeah. Because Anthony Davis scratched his... Um... Anthony Scratch Nose Davis. <laughs> After the street clothes Davis. Honey, don't you weaponize a female genitalia. Well. He scratched his cornea again, and they lost. Who's the best player in the NBA? Because it's not Anthony Davis, and it's not Devin Booker. And I'm sure this will trigger RJ Loner phone, who says Bronny sucks, or whoever said Bronny Whatever. sucks. Whatever. Uh, it's LeBron James. LeBron James is the best player in the NBA. Period. Mm -hmm. Jake, your thoughts? I mean, I, I think he's in the conversation. I, I think that the, the problem is, is that... Apple does not do loaner phones. What? Um, we, we, do no, we no longer offer loaner phones. That program ended five years ago. Oh, even if you're John Calipari getting the same money? If your phone is impacted by the <coughs> solar eclipse. They sent me the terms and service for Apple Care. Um, mm -hmm. Essentially, under the terms of service, they say uh, that if you take a picture directly... Yeah, so you can't take a picture of the eclipse with your iPhone? No, because it'll damage the lens. I did not know. I, I, okay, why is my phone tripping? <laughs> and they, they emailed me that. Loner phones have been gone for five years, and you stood here and argued over it. Oh, what? shit. Damn, I am tripping. Um, essentially, if you have Apple Care, that's not covered is what they're saying. Huh. Um, 
Apple Care uh, does not cover damage or impact from the solar eclipse to the camera module. To the camera module. Okay. Um, please uh, take advantage of Apple Care by scheduling an appointment at our Genius Bar at your local Apple location. Would you like to do that now? No. Let's wait for the damage. Okay, if I could type. Wait for the damage to occur. Thank you. Okay, there you go. Thank you. So, well, so wait, let me get this right. Mm-hmm. So, so they haven't been offering loaner phones for five years. Five years. We just found out. That's right. Five years. And you're still dying on that hill. You are still dying on that. So hill. who's the best player in the league? Yeah, I think LeBron's in the conversation. No doubt about it. Steve Jobs. No, not Steve Jobs. Okay. Uh, Phoenix Suns are not it. Does Monty and Jake need a wellness check? It, it is. They are. I was watching that game last night. It's frustrating to watch the Suns. They don't move the ball, and they heavily rely on three-point shooting. Mm -hmm. And they're in that game because Book is dominating from the, the mid-range, and Kevin Durant just keeps shooting threes, and it was it, uh, that was frustrating. Uh, Sir Bob Lob's law. Monty has Apple. Don't care. Exactly. Right. They do pretty much fix everything. Oh my God. I'm at the range yesterday, bro. <laughs> I'm at the range yesterday and I wanted to change the angle of my camera. So I picked up my tripod. I went to grab my phone and my phone went. <laughs> bounced on the corner of the phone. Did it survive? It did. Okay, good. Undamaged. Undamaged. It was amazing. Uh, let's see. Jokic is the best player in the league. Nikola Jokic, I think you, there's an argument to yeah. be made. Tyrese Halliburton is not the best player in the NBA. Uh, San Diego State, Glenn. Phoenix was looking ahead to back-to-back -to -back versus the Clippers. Unacceptable. I don't know what it was. Glenn, that... It, that was a terrible performance. Well, and you know, we're watching Sports Center this morning and you know, the the, the reason I tend to agree with you Glenn is because Phoenix has a tiebreaker over New Orleans already. So, uh it, it feels like they were just kind of Well, they're tied along. for the last spot. Right, but if they if they ended the season tied for the last spot, it would go to Phoenix because Phoenix has a tiebreaker between the two. <laughs> and so Phoenix is out here just coasting through this game, not really trying to play their best game, looking forward to the Clippers. Uh, Shooter Texas, best player in the NBA. Victor is the way. Please <laughs> stop. I watched some of him last night too. He, you know, uh, hey player, best is Victor. See, Victor's the way. See, sorry, RJC loner phone. No loner phones. Bad take by you, huh? Damn. Oh my God, uh, Dakota. The iPhone has been out for twenty five years iPhone was not around 25 years ago. No, it is. But not. solar eclipses were. Solar, that's right. Yeah, it's Science. just just a, just a clear just Science. clear that up. Science. Uh caps lock Friday Coog. RJC man 38 just take the L. Just take I mean, the L. Just say hey, yeah, I was wrong. But iPhone came out in 2007. So that, Now listen, I'm not trying to be no kind of dickhead or nothing, you know. Money. Was 2007, 25 years ago. <laughs> no, it wasn't. No, no, it wasn't. Was that like 15? Uh, can you math? What's 2024? My <laughs> Did RJC Loner Phone say that? Yes. RJC had Apple Phone before Steve Jobs. <laughs> Where's his? There, we get a lot of messages. Where's his? I had one issue in 25 years of iPhone. It was eight years ago. <laughs> you can't make this up. Dude, I'm telling you. You can't help yourself, bro. Uh, okay. No, that's it. Thank you, comma. You're the best. Why don't you fuck off? <laughs> yeah. Okay, the answer is 17 years, Mr. Loner Phone. It's It's been, you know. Uh, yes, Jimmy, me and Al Gore invented the internet, too. I've heard that about oh, you. I've heard that. okay. 
Hugh Jazz Gamer 247, oh, a I member we for going, a, I thought we were going a different direction there. Hugh Janus. You are most welcome. Thank you for contacting Apple Support. Please enjoy the eclipse. <laughs> Apple, Apple customer job. care is amazing. The troll job. Amazing. I love that's why I'm Apple customer service. Okay. Uh Monty handling the tripod. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I do have three legs. Yeah. I do have three legs, <laughs> huge jazz. That's exactly right. That's right, huge well jazz. Well played. Well played right there. Uh okay. Yes, Jimmy. Me and Al Gore invented the internet. To which Dakota says, Al Gore and I. (laughs) 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 Big Blue Horses, AMA Supercross coming May 11th. Well, you like AMA Supercross that much that you have a date. Okay. Uh, I got it circled on the calendar and we're doing a video. Best player in the NBA, Larry Markkinen, obviously. Obviously, exactly. My right. fucking ass. Uh, Brandon Butler, whole lot of money getting spent on mediocre teams in the NBA. Phoenix, Golden State. Golden State's got to move on from Dre. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it, time. It, it, it is time. Clay Thompson has refound himself, by the way. That, uh, as they all do. You, and against the Jazz, too. And against the Jazz, too. So, uh, let's see. People now texting me that uh, John Calipari will not be paid by Kentucky. RJC loaner phone says he will be, so, so it must be true. So Calipari's getting paid. iPhones have been around for 25 years. And what was the, oh, he in, he invented the internet with Al Gore. I, got I, it. I just want people to understand that it's on the internet, dickheads. Like, don't say stuff. Just Google search it, please. I Like, it, it, it hold on the internet's kind of a dangerous thing there's a lot of things on the internet <laughs> john uh let's see okay um the ink isn't dry yet uh john Luzzi at the uh usa today um, let's see, uh, March 26, Calipari, Kentucky, which gave Sunday Calipari. Uh, let's see, Kentucky early Sunday evening gave Calipari permission to negotiate with Arkansas, a shock within the basketball world. Um, according to Matt Norlander from CBS Sports, Calipari has wanted out of Lexington since February even expressed pri- uh, privately his willingness to forego his guarantee. But whoa, whoa, whoa. I thought he was getting paid. Dude. Per Norlander, Calipari's move to Arkansas consisted of assurances that he could utilize the NCAA transfer portal. Um. They even break down his guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna make he's gonna make a base salary of seven point five million dollars per year per year at Arkansas. Mm-hmm. That's over a million dollar cut. His budget for NIL is expected to be north of five million dollars, which is almost double what he was able to spend at Kentucky. I, I just dude do you guys under he's not getting paid the buyout he's not getting paid the same amount at arkansas as he was at kentucky they arkansas obviously is going to give him ammunition to go out and work in in the portal and with nil of course like this is a very straightforward situation i don't even know why this has to be an argument like you would think that we would all be on the same page here's the definitive one According to his details of his Kentucky contract, which he signed in 2019, and several reports from college basketball insiders, Pete Thamel, have confirmed 
Calipari owes Kentucky nothing for leaving, and Kentucky owes John Calipari nothing by letting him out of his contract. Oh. If Calipari had been fired by Kentucky, he would have been owed $35 million in full as of April 1st. You mook. All you had to do was a Google search. Stay hard. That's all you had to do. That's it. But you couldn't even do that. You could not even do a God, you make it too easy. You make it too easy. I'm I'm just I'm just telling you. To which you paid me five dollars to say you get 8.2 minus Arkansas salary still up to Calipari. Bro. Are you both unable to get the simple math? Says the guy who just couldn't do 25 years with the iPhone. Two more dollars. Now we're at five, like two and two is four. Who's walking away from $30 million? Uh, correct they, me if they, I'm, they don't owe him money. Hey, hey, correct me if I'm wrong. Is that whose is spelled incorrectly there? Is, is that who whose? Whose? W H O S E. Who is? Yeah. It'd be W. I know you're smarter than us. It's fine. Uh, Ed Enrique is a new member on hey, the show. Hey, what's up, Ed? Uh, Big Blue Horse is a member for five months. How did your sponsor enjoy giving Friday comments? The Advocates at theadvocates.com. She laughed. Jen, Jen Young is great. The, I'm telling you, you guys, the, the work we did Friday made a huge difference for the Advocates. It made a huge difference in their ability to help and service yes, the Murray Children's pan, uh, Pantry to fight childhood hunger. Unbelievable job. Thousand bucks. Unbelievable is job. no small thing. Unbelievable job. Uh, RJC loaner phone. Not significantly less and will make the same amount. No. No, he won't. He will not. Dude. He will not. A milli is not a small amount. He's making fully a million dollars less a year. To make more than he made at Kentucky, he will have to win an NCAA championship. He will have to win the NCAA tournament. And that's just to go beyond what he would have made. At Ken- you're wrong. Guy, just, you're wrong. I, why we do this in, in, in sports and in life, I have no idea. You're fucking wrong. He took a million dollar pay cut a million dollar pay cut. It's eight million dollars less at a minimum, and he has to win an NCAA tournament to make the money he was making at Kentucky. Come on, you're now. wrong. Come on now. Good lord, man! Like, stop. Just own that shit, right? Uh, you dub Van Jim. Great show. Rome is the way. Go dogs. Rome is the way. <laughs> I like Jim Rome. I, I, it's since he's not on CBS Sports, I don't get to listen to his show anymore. But Jim Rome is a good Can anybody dude. Tell me where, like, where do you even find Jim right now? I don't know. Like, he's still on the radio. I don't know. Yeah, you know, uh, you guys aren't a sponsor last after Friday. No, they loved it. Nah, we're you good, guys. bro. Dakota Tubbs, RJ Loner phone. I'll I'll be drone delivering you a humble pie today. Be on the lookout. It'll be coming from the eclipse. Stare at the sun. You'll see if it comes. <laughs> Don't stare at the sun. Don't. Uh, Shooter Texas. Good Lord. Can we just move on from former Kentucky coach? It's been covered, RJ. Time to move on now. Eclipse is coming. Okay. Some people don't want to wear the jacket because it doesn't look good. Take the L and move on. Happy birthday. Mike Smith says he admitted he was wrong. He did. Okay, cool. We get a lot of comments. Uh, There it is right there. Okay. I was wrong. There you go. But comma again. I was wrong, comma again. Shut the fuck up, Donnie. Uh, (laughs) Giggity, say it with your chest. Shut the fuck up, Donnie. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, Sir Bob Lob Laws, there, there, and they are. Let's run. <laughs> Caleb, I'm just glad someone else is getting roasted besides Oak State fan. Exactly. Exactly. Um, but do we have to repent? Now, yeah, okay, so let's legit talk about this. This is this is I like this topic. Okay, a lot. do you guys believe that God is coming today to end the world? 
honest to God in the comment section. Do you believe that God is coming to end end the world? Yeah, no duh. <laughs> because MTG Marjorie Taylor Greene, who some believe is going to be the vice president running mate of Donnie, said that said that earthquakes in the solar eclipse were sent to earth by God because people will not repent. And we were saying that bro now never mind <laughs> that solar eclipses are a, a science equation donnie please it's essentially math we know and again noaa projects them out i believe to the year 2900 right is where i think i saw it on their twitter or facebook or Insta National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration has it has a chart, a flow chart, a flow chart that tells you if you lift or not. Fucking a. <laughs> um, that tells us <laughs> it, they, like it's plotted out every solar eclipse because it's a science problem, right? So an, an equation, mathematics and shit. Yeah. That tells you every time there's going to be a solar eclipse. It's a quadratic formula. Your God's not coming back today to end the world. It's a science equation. You don't always have to be negative. Earthquakes happen thousands of times a day around the globe. Thousands of times a day. In normal places where there's a lot of activity or in New York and New Jersey because the Sopranos are sinners. <laughs> sinners. Apparently. Do you believe that a God is coming back to end the world today? No, I don't. I think that this is... This see the the problem with that assertion is we're just we're, we're pretending like oh this is some shock that there is an eclipse it's as if you know we we we've never seen one before or like like this is somehow like breaking news or something like we've been knowing this eclipse was going to happen for like years at this point years and years yeah so like it's not some surprise and 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 you know, Mrs. Monty always goes full like, "Oh, well, this is what happens when you have religion and God, and you control people, and you know, you you you, you tell them things that aren't true." And I tend to kind of categorize this one as just that. MTG is out here rolling out the religious doctrine and the the propaganda to say, "Oh man, the world's dying. We better pray and we better repent, and you know, we better admit how terrible we are as humans, or else we're not going to wake up tomorrow." And all I have to say is, dude, if that's who you're trying to appeal to, this race is already over. You're done. You're like, you're cooked. I don't believe that this is the case. I could be wrong. Big Daddy Magic, you're never wrong when you say Victor's the way plus the chicks thinks it, think it's sexy. Okay. Okay. Uh, to Gary's question about repenting, Dakota says, only you, Gary. Uh, Aaron Wilson, get out of my way, dude. Bro, I, I mean, you're not even wrong. Like, literally, like, she, I, she just says some wild things. You going to play his drop? Get out of my way, dude. Thank you. Uh, Mike Smith, happy birthday. Uh, LOL, Aaron Wilson. Force Ghost Fabio, I wish. Tanner Plummer, no, I don't know if God exists. Different show. Giggity, uh, if he is, I'm glad to have known you guys. <laughs> Love you, buddy. Love you. Uh, Jake wants to have pizza with you this weekend, Giggity. Uh, the world ain't ending today. I don't believe that it is. I don't believe it is. Uh, Oak State James, y'all know I am a hospital chaplain. Today is a normal Monday. When the eclipse is over, we will have awful traffic. That's it. <laughs> uh, caps Lock. Uh, Friday Coog. Hell no, the eclipse in 2024 is when the world won. Oh, thank you for clarifying. Yeah. This thank is you. like the doomsday clock stuff. <laughs> I'm just amazed that we get into this thing where, wow, this guy time traveled to 2027. It's on TikTok. Yeah, I mean, if it's on TikTok. So, via social media. Do you guys think if the world, and this is just, this is a stupid old money. I know I don't you're, know anything. You're a fat, dying Mormon who knows nothing. If there are no people on Earth in 2027, do you really think there would be electricity? Do you really think there'd be running water? <laughs> and by the way, where's the cell service coming from? And do you think the cell grid would be working? Do you think there wouldn't, wouldn't there be weeds and trash everywhere, like tumbleweed? 
Okay. Asking for a friend. Dakota, nobody knows the day or the hour of the end. I don't believe we well, do. Well, Putin does. But it's all coming. That's true. Um, after some of the comment section today, I hope so. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I identify as God, and I can confirm I have already came today as you were. <laughs> I have already came today? Shut the fuck up, Donnie. Good Lord, Gary. <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, do you have to look right into the eclipse to be raptured? I believe you do. Just dead sent. Don't look at the eclipse. Do not stare into the eclipse, please. Uh, Big Daddy Magic, the King James Bible says Jesus will return, but no man knows the hour of the time. End of story. Okay. Okay. Uh, RJC Loner Phone, you started under 3 million. That was not the case like you, like you, okay. What are you talking Still about? Still fighting the good fight. Uh, the world will not end with the eclipse today. Everyone knows it died during Y2K. Good point. Damn. Good point. Damn. The world's over. This is actually purgatory, which is and why you're sucks. yeah, you're forced to listen to the show every day. Because I don't want them to see me down. And Anthony Davis's eye hurts. I just try to stand strong. Forrest goes Fabio. This is blasphemy, Monty. Could be. I'm not, you know. Eric Wasikowski, mocking God is never good, Monty. I'm not mocking your God. I'm not. <laughs> look, Quit look, mocking me. Dude, I, I, you know, just because your God is orange with blonde hair, I mean, we're not mocking him. I mean, this is one of his disciples, you know? Uh, happy birthday, Mike Smith. Quit mocking me. Exactly. Because he's God. Uh, hey, play a Victor. It's more impressive than a silly little eclipse. Victor shows up every day and just thinks that no mortal man could ever do. Victor's the way. Okay. Uh, Jimmy Autzen, that wasn't an earthquake in New York. That was just a tickle. Oh, okay. 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 I don't think that... Are we thirsty for the world to end? Feels like it. I think we're thirsty for something to disrupt the day-to-day. -day. Something that would, you know, set the world into a like a world ending scenario, a zombie land kind of situation. I think we watch too many movies. Yeah. That's my opinion. I did watch the Reacher movies this weekend. Like Jack Reacher. Yeah. With Tom Cruise. Yeah. The Tom like Cruise. Him? Yeah. He's good as the, this. I don't know which order to watch them in. The Reacher movies are good. They're the one with the lawyer is better. I think. Although the one with the kid is good too. He throws a guy off a building. Yeah. You know, but have you guys seen the Equalizer movies mm. with um, Denzel? Denzel. I think number two is the best Equalizer one where he throws the guy off the watchtower in the hurricane. Yeah. But the Reacher movies, Equalizer is better. Reacher movies aren't bad. Yeah. Tom Cruise is an action hero is pretty good. I, I like a lot. Is Do you like Tom Cruise? I like him in Top Gun. Yep, like him in Top Gun, Mission Impossible. Oh my God, the, um, the a few good men, a few good men. You know the Reacher movies. Um, there was God. What is the the end of the world one? The one where he was in the yeah, yeah the end yeah. of the world. Uh, hang on, was see. really good. Risky Business, which Jake has never seen, Let really see. good. Edge of Tomorrow, Edge of Tomorrow. Okay, uh, and then we're Oblivion was awesome with Tom Cruise. That was very good. Don't remember it. Yeah uh let's see what else, what he, man he's done a lot of movies he has he was pretty good the last samurai was pretty good that nah, movie so, it was so long it was pretty long yeah yeah it was yeah um jerry Maguire. yeah jerry Maguire is a classic it was good yeah i agree uh tanner plumer i remember on my mission that uh there was this uh lds guy who used to who used okay i remember on my mission there was this lds guy who used math to figure out when Jesus comes back and he thought it would happen in 2019. Let's just say that didn't happen, obviously. War of the Worlds with Tom Cruise. Gas. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Force goes Fabio. I'm praying for Monty to be saved. Thank you. I need all the prayers I can get. Thank you. Uh, Bailey Dietrich, just like analytics, it's science and numbers. Well, and that's the thing. So, so I'm trying to, I, I'm trying to empathize with, with the person who would actually believe MTG, who was like, oh, she said it, it must be true. Like, I'm trying to understand, okay, if you're in that thought process, does that just mean that you're... Do like, you believe that God causes solar eclipses? Do you believe that God 
whichever God you believe in, I'm not judgmental in that way. Believe what you want to believe. Do you believe that God causes earthquakes? He doesn't cause earthquakes. He does not. Like this idiot on TikTok the other day is talking about how there is a, a alien spaceship that has been orbiting the earth. It's, I think he said 30 tons and it's been there for thousands of years. And he puts up the image of this thing. And there's this NASA scientist guy who do, has a TikTok channel. All he does is debunk stupid stupidity. Yeah. The guy was like, this is a space blanket that was lost on a spacewalk and it was lost live on television. This astronaut was doing a spacewalk and lost a thermal space blanket. And as you know, we don't retrieve space junk. And that's what this guy was using as his, it's been here for thousands of years and it weighs 30 tons. Yeah. And it's quite literally a thermal space blanket. I Like we're so desperate for aliens and the end of the world. And all I want is Costco chocolate chip cookies. Yes. That's all I want. Yes. Uh, was Joe Biden responsible for the earthquake in New York? No, the, he was responsible for the bridge. You know, the great thing about the bridge. First of all, <laughs> amazing TV show. I'm watching uh, ABC World News, nightly news the other day. Because my wife was out of town this weekend. I was lonely. Um. I'm watching ABC Nightly News, and they did a story about how common near misses are between cargo ships and bridges. It turns out it's a weekly event. So Joe Biden knocking over the bridge in Baltimore to get Pete Buttigieg hero status. That's what the, the right was saying. Is complete bullshit. Um, in Brooklyn the other day at the port of New York, mm -hmm. a cargo ship drifted within a hundred yards of a bridge because it lost power and it had three tugboats escorting it, which were not uh, powerful enough to stop its momentum. So three more tugboats had to show up and rescue the ship drifting towards a major bridge in New York. Turns out that according to ABC News, this happens at least monthly in the Golden Gate Passage. Because you guys know that the Golden Gate is actually not a bridge. Now, the Golden Gate Bridge is a bridge, but the Golden Gate is a shipping channel. And you may know this if you're in the Bay Area. It's a shipping channel. And so massive ships go through the Golden Gate. And it happens monthly where a ship loses power and is, is drifting uncontrolled in the Golden Gate. <laughs> so it's one of those stories where we think it's rare and Joe Biden wanted Pete Buttigieg to be a hero. Right. So we crashed a boat into a bridge, killed people, and crippled shipping in the Northeast. Huh. No, he didn't. This happens all the time, as it turns out. Sorry. Sir Bob Lob's Law. MTG gives stupid people a bad name. For real, though. RJC, man, how you feeling about that? Damn, bro. You ain't got to go in on him like that. <laughs> I'm asking for his opinion, which is always right. Shooter Texas. Okay, for the Christians, go read to these chapter two. To the, to the, the, the man of lawlessness isn't here yet. Well, there's that. Yes. Uh, Tanner Plummer. Can't wait. Uh, to cold take MTG after the eclipse. <laughs> well, there is that. Uh, Boyd Lake, cruise, cruise is good, just mid-cast as Jack Reacher. Okay. I thought he was good as Jack Reacher. I thought he was really good. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Capasso, I'd Wise Shut was a different movie. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Tom Cruise in A Few Good Men, I Want the Truth. Dude, iconic. Where's my bat? I think better with my bat. Yeah. Uh, cocktail, he was excellent in cocktail. Aliens are coming. You can't handle the truth. Caps Lock Friday. <laughs> Tropic Thunder, no, no. The Mummy with Tom Cruise was a flop. Never saw it. Probably why it was a flop. Edge of Tomorrow, yes. 
San Diego State Clan. You're goddamn right I gave the order. I mean, the I'm an Aztecs man. <laughs> exactly. Oh, my God. I just think, I think we were so, I don't know. I think we're so desperate in this country to, for the disaster. We're so desperate for the yeah. chip to hit the bridge. The thing to talk about. That's what we want. We yeah. want the thing to talk about. I would agree with that. That's what we want. You know, I just, I don't know. Aaron Wilson. I just watched Mastering Commander, another long movie. Yeah. It is a really good movie, but it is long. That's one of the, I. that's a great movie. That is a great movie. Uh, month, RJ Seaman. Month, how is your pup's spine and hips? Ah, he's all right. He is, I have a really good, so you, as I said, my dog died about a month ago, mm -hmm. six weeks ago now. I have one other dog, Django. And he has, he's a rat terrier. So he has this hinge in his back. So his back legs work. And he jumped off our bed about two weeks ago now and fucked himself up. Like, yeah. And the doctor gave us anti-inflammatory medication, but it, it helps to a certain extent. But I have a deck in my backyard. He has to go down those stairs, go out to the yard, go to the bathroom, walk back up the stairs. The stairs are on the steep side. It hurts his back for him to walk up those stairs. I was making chicken nuggies for dinner last night and I didn't see him go outside. And so he came back in and he was all fucked. So I picked him up and he, to put him on the couch and you have to lift him. Basically what you have to do is lift his chest and then pick his backside up. It, he only weighs 20 pounds. He's not a big dog. And he just is howling in pain. It's the worst fucking thing ever. So essentially what we're doing right now is anti-inflammatories and muscle relaxers. And today he seems much better this morning. He like sprinted out to go to the bathroom. Yeah. I had to stop him from running up the stairs. I actually picked him up and carried him into the house and he seems fine, yeah. but it's, it's just a day to day thing. It's, it's frustrating. It's frustrating. It just, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, Zesty, isn't it odd to have an earthquake in New York city? Odd, not unheard of. It is odd, not unheard of. The towering inferno terrified me as a kid. Terrified me. Yes, Capazzo, if it bleeds, it leads. It's ex exactly right. Yeah, Mike, Master and Commander. Happy birthday, Mike Smith. Master and Commander is awesome. Love that movie. It was very good. Uh, Sir Bob Lob. Earthquakes happen everywhere. Most of them are minor. There's thousands of them around the globe every day. Yeah. Thousands. Uh, has anyone checked in... Uh, check the Zulu building in New York after the earthquake. Zul building? I have not. I have not. I have not. Uh, it might be time, Monty. I just had to do this with my 18-year-old dog. I hope not. Not yet, dude. He's incredibly healthy. He's happy. He's a go-lucky dog. He just, he walks fine. The He's, issue he is. He just runs around a lot. And so he, he pushes it too much. He is a very athletic dog. So he, he like, he doesn't, he doesn't jump off of a bed like he launches launches yeah. off the bed. He is a very, very athletic dog. And his it it is akin to tweak. Everybody's tweaking tweaks your back, right? Like yeah. I just think that's what it was. Yeah. That's what it was. Uh happy birthday, Mike. Hope it's a good one. Hope it's a good one. Uh, the Monty show presented by the advocates at the advocates.com. The best injury attorneys in the business. Yes. They're still taking donations. If you miss the opportunity to donate, the advocates are working with the Murray children's Pan pantry to end childhood hunger. We raised over a thousand dollars, uh, on Friday. Every penny goes to feed hungry kids. Donate today. Advocates donations on Venmo. Great partners. You guys are great. Love every one of you, including you, RJC Loner Phone. Mike Smith, happy birthday, my guy. Thanks for being here. Until tomorrow, say goodbye, Jake. Goodbye, Jake.